Right, we are back with another crazy experiment. So, this one I think is an absolute game changer. This is going to change a lot of things for a lot of people. Not necessarily you, but it's going to help a lot of people. As always, try and watch the video the whole way through, please. It helps with the algorithms. Don't go skipping parts. You could pick up something that you could adjust with this technique and make it work your way. So, can we make our own sinker wet? Yes. Yes, we can. I was testing yesterday and I forgot I left. Whoops. Left a bit of resin in my um <laughs> in my mold. Okay, so for this to make your own sinker white alcohol ink. Well, it's not even an alcohol ink actually. I'm going to show you. We need a white pigment paste. Any brand would work for this, but I'm just using the Ocean White. Now, bear in mind this is going to depend on your viscosity of your resin. Things are going to uh, come into account that you need to kind you may need to tweak things a little bit differently to what I'm doing. And I've just got a really cheap acetone nail polish remover so this one is a mix between acetone and aqua now aqua and resin really don't mix well so i would recommend doing this with uh, a 100 percent acetone now you may be wondering why can't we do this with alcohol let me show you so i'm going to begin with the alcohol and show you what happens so i'm applying a small amount of my white pigment paste into my mixing cup and now I've got a 99.9% isopropanol and then I'm just going to put some of that into the cup with the paste and this is where I have tested before and not really got far with it because when we try to mix these you'll see it it doesn't mix it just turns into a clumpy gooey it you just couldn't you couldn't use that in your work it just it really doesn't <laughs> it doesn't do what we want it to do now comes the acetone again small amount in my mixing cup when i introduce the acetone i think even if i just swirl this you can see that it's actually reacting with the pigment paste and it's stripping it apart and turning it into a pigmented liquid. Now you may also be asking, how is this safe to mix with alcohol? Acetone and alcohol are used commonly together. So don't worry about dropping this onto your alcohol inks. Wow, the birds are noisy today. Um, it's, it's safe. I've done the scientific research for you guys. <laughs> I wouldn't give you anything that's gonna cause you harm, but as always, Use your PPE. So we just mix that up together. And spare needle tip bottle. Again, you're gonna need to adjust this depending. So I'm gonna pour in more of my acetone. And I'm gonna add a little bit more pigment. Now this is the kind of seesaw that you need to work out. It's how much pigment versus acetone. But once you've got it, you've got it. I would say start with less, do a small tester, and if they sink too much, add some more acetone to your mixture until it's at the right balance. So once we have that, we can then transfer that into our needle tip bottle. And as always, I'd recommend putting a small ball bearing in there just to be able to shake it up and disturb the pigment. And here is one that I made yesterday and you can see those those pigments just sitting on the side where the bottle's been laid down. I wanted to lay it down just to show you. And again, I'll put a bearing in there. So when I was experimenting yesterday, I started off with more pigment paste and it was kind of tricky to reduce the amount of pigment paste. You have to get a pipette in once it's settled and just suck out some of the pigment or leave the needle tip upside down so the pigments sink to the needle tip and then just open slowly and carefully and get some of that pigment out and then top up with more acetone. So let me show you some of the first tests that I did. And I was really actually impressed with these as they are because it showed me that we can get the effects of a normal sinker alcohol ink 
and it also pushes the colors down. Now you've seen me do this with Whiteout, AKA Tipex, and we got some different results. So this was the first ones that I dropped. So I then realized that I needed to take some of the pigment out from the bottle to create a better effect. So this was one that I did next. The colors muddied a little bit, but that is so close to what we normally achieve with our sinkers. Now this could also be handy if you've run out of sinker white and there's none in stock, or if you're in a country that you can't actually get sinker white shipped to you because of the alcohol content. This again, I think is gonna be a, a big game changer for the resin, resin art community. So, should we test it out? <laughs> Let's get mixing. Right, so my resin's been sitting for 10 minutes. I ran it through the um, vacuum chamber whilst I was waiting because there was quite a few bubbles anyway and I, need, I needed to wait. It hasn't thickened up as much as I want, but we're just gonna go ahead. I'm just gonna pour my resin into the cavities that I want. Now any surface bubbles I can just pop with my long nose lighter. Important, do not do this. Do not introduce any fire or flames to your alcohol inks or the acetone once you've added them because that is gonna go ablaze. You're gonna end up with a fire, don't do that. Always pop your bubbles before but you know don't worry too much because the alcohol inks also pop any surface bubbles so for the alcohol inks we are using the 20, 26 ink set from let's resin also and i'm not going to show all of the colors just to save some time but i'll add my alcohol inks to my um, pieces and then i'll show you when i add the acetone if you're new to my channel go and check out my patreon playlist there's lots of videos where you can see me doing exactly what i'm skipping Okay, those are my inks dropped. I'm going to get some yucky mud in in there because the red decided to take over the green. <laughs> Don't judge me. <laughs> so I'm now just shaking up my acetone sinker. And I will take you for a close-up. Now this reacts very differently to our normal sinker whites. And I'm just going to add a drop to each colour. We'll just roughly cover the piece, have some white on its own, why not? As you can see, it's very different to our normal white sinker. It reacts very differently. Don't want to go too heavy. I might add more to one just to see what happens. Get some deeper spores. But again, I'll skip the rest and we'll be back for the hour stir. I think that will do. Now add some more in these empty areas. It's not reacting the way that it did during my testing yesterday, which is strange. But we'll see. Right, we'll be back for the hour stir. I'm going to do the rest off camera. This is why I love experimenting. <laughs> It's been about 30 minutes and these are doing something that I've not seen during my testing. They've not, they're acting in a very, very strange way. You see that circular kind of detailing. Now I think that is because I took some, I reduced the amount of pigment and there's, so therefore there's more acetone in my mixture. So I'm going to stir these now. I might keep one plane just to see what happens. I'm going to keep... Um, I think I'm going to keep this one plane because there's a really big circle and I don't know what it's doing underneath. <laughs> so, you know, this is a, a learning curve for me because I've never seen this reaction in my testing. Well, I only started testing yesterday. But it didn't do this. So... I'm going to start to stir. I think what's happening is the acetone is kind of puddling on the surface of the resin. Almost like a silicon oil does. So I'm just going to repeat that on the others. And I'll see you for the demold. I know what it is. It's the content of the aqua. Or it's, it's the aqua content. <laughs> Watch this. See that? 
it's sucking it straight from the surface. I'll show you on this one here. That is dust aqua. So again, the pure acetone will prevent that from happening. So what I can do as a tester on the ones that I can, I'm just going to remove that surface aqua. Otherwise it's, it's not going to cure. So from my testing yesterday, it didn't do this because I had less of the acetone liquid in my mixture. So if you can only get the acetone with the aqua, do this part before you stir it. Because then you're going to be spreading the aqua over the surface of the back of the piece. So by removing it, we should get a much better outcome. And it really is as simple as just dipping the tissue into the aqua and sucking it up. So I've just finished sucking all the aqua from the surface and I wanted to show you this one here. You can already see some of the feathering effect, the spores happening here. So it's looking promising. I will see you for the D-mold. Right, we're all set. So first thing to test is the backs. Will any ink come off? Any residue? Anything like that? Absolutely nothing, which is a great, great start. And they are set solid. So we have some small, tiny craters where the aqua was sitting, but it's dried out. So like I said earlier on, you'd be better getting the, the acetone without the aqua. So let's see <laughs> if we've advanced. So the reason why I showed you the bottle from the day before is because obviously I've gone through the testing of working out how heavy and then adjusting it. So to start the video, I wouldn't have been able to just pour that straight into my bottle and, and go ahead with that because I probably would have had the same results as this. So as mentioned, start off with less and then add more. So let's see what we've got and if they're anything like our normal pieces. Look at that. You would not believe that that is not a normal sink of white, would you? Absolutely stunning. I think this is a game changer. Because sometimes the, the sinkers that we like to use are out of stock and we can, we can make our own if needed. There's some deeper spores in that one. You see that blob there? That again is aqua that's sunk down. That's that crater there. So easily fixed. Easily fixed. But it adds a different vibe to it as well. As always, give the video a thumbs up, drop me a comment. If you haven't subbed, hit that button for me. Wow, that one's very different. They definitely reacted differently to my previous day's testing. But again, I think without the aqua, we'd get better results. Let's do two at a time. Speed things up. Wow, almost identical, what's that? Little bit of a blob there. And some sink in there. Love it, absolutely love it. It works really well. So one thing I will say, I did experiment with backing with a black alcohol ink. I had varied results what seems to happen is that they come out they're showing up really well on camera but off camera they're very dark because it's not the white sinker is not as opaque as a normal sinker but we can work around that as well I mean you could always add a second background once cured with black instead of a black alcohol ink that may work almost like a marble I love that 
like a whirlwind. They're all pretty much the same colours. That is stunning. Let's go with the hearts. Do two at a time. Wow. Little blob there. No, that's not a blob. That is, again, a small tiny crater from the aqua. But look at those. Again, very handy if you can't get alcohol sinkers delivered to your country. I know a lot of my viewers have issues with that. Wow. I'm really chuffed with that. And it's only taken me two days to adjust the white to this. Two experiments. Experiments really do pay off. You've seen that with my channel. I do persist. I don't just stop and give up. Sometimes I just take a break <laughs> and come back to it. But sometimes it's easier to just walk away and come back after some time because sometimes we can overthink wow yeah. okay so i have filmed that last week and i've been experimenting since um and i have cracked this so much so much better results so if you see those translucent pieces that i made with the just acetone and we suffered with the craters. Now, what I've done differently is actually mix my pigment with a small amount of acetone first and then topped it up with alcohol. So what the alcohol has done is it has helped the pigments float on the back of the surface, keeping the back opaque. So you can see, you can't really see through these pieces as much because the alcohol has helped keep the pigments on the back and there's no craters so the alcohol is actually mixed with the aqua and evaporated it's assisted the aqua to evaporate from the backs absolutely none of the issues with the aqua whatsoever so let me quickly show you what i did to achieve these ones so again the same as before but you are going to need more pigment paste for this because the alcohol is going to keep some of the pigment on the back. And what we're looking for is around a 30-70 ratio. So I'd say to begin 30% 30, 30 acetone to 70% alcohol. Obviously I'm not putting in the, the pigment paste as a percentage just to keep it simplified. You will just need to experiment with how much pigment you do need. So it is again important to add the acetone first to strip that pigment back to not get that clumpy mess. And again, this is gonna differ depending on the, the percentage of your alcohol. Mine is 99.9%. .9%. So I'm gonna top that up with say another 70% of alcohol. I'm not measuring this, I'm just showing you as an example. I will then put this into a needle tip bottle that I will adjust at a later date. And you will see they mix really, really nicely. So that alcohol again is helping those pigments to float, covering the back and keeping the pieces opaque. Here is one that I made which created these pieces that I've just shown you. You can see the pigment at the bottom. So again, this is about 30% acetone topped up with alcohol. And again, put a ball bearing in there. I haven't done that yet with this one. And it shakes up and mixes just like a normal sink of white. So there you go. Absolutely stunning results. If you want a full video on this new mix, let me know in the comments. I will make it for you from scratch and we did the whole thing again. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the testing experiments and the video. I will see you for the next one. Bye for now.